whether ESPN knew this was coming or not. Um, if they didn't, they're negligent in, in a criminal way, I would think. But um, <laughs> Florida State, it, it, unless there's some major turnaround in a settlement, uh, they're going to be in the Big Ten. And um, they wouldn't have done this today if they didn't have a home already set aside. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hall of Fame College Football. I am your host, Jason Watkins, and with me today is a special guest from the Big 12 Mafia, Mr. Nathan Bomber-Brown, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about, this is one of the guys that is in the know, folks, when it comes to all this craziness going on in the ACC, Florida State files suit today uh, against the Atlantic Coast Conference for Apparently, I mean, there's so much to unpack with this, but but basically, let us know what what is the the main impudence for them doing this. Um, you know, what was it, what what started? The, I mean, obviously, they they haven't been happy for a long time. They, they right, them, right. in Miami. Some of these folks have been talking about this for a while. But what was the straw that that got them there, and what exactly? Do they feel like they're going to get out of this? Obviously, they're trying to get out and go to the Big Ten is what we understand, correct? Right. They've been working on this since the summer in mm -hmm. a formal sense. Um, they couldn't do anything much further than that exploratory type stuff till today. Once they right. did their declaration, the Board of Trustees work and whatnot. But they've been working on this for months and if not years. And the reason is, you asked the reason is because of anybody uh, anybody has the same reasoning. They want to be in those two P2 conferences. They want to be in right. the big. They want to be in the SEC. It, 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 as far as FSU is concerned, they are a big boy. They're not quite a blue, blue bud. They're right on the edge. But uh, mm -hmm. regardless, they have many, many national championships, and, and they deserve respect. And when the College Football Playoff Committee slash ESPN basically thumbed their nose at them and said, you know what, you're just not worthy, that was it. You, you said, what was the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back? That's it, is that college football playoff thing. And I whether ESPN knew this was coming or not, um, right. if they didn't, they're negligent in, in a criminal way, I would think. But <laughs> um, Florida State, it, it, unless there's some major turnaround in a settlement, uh, they're going to be in the Big Ten. And um, they wouldn't have done this today if they didn't have a home already set aside. I don't Already. have any sources I can quote you that know that say that for sure, but I can I can 99% guarantee they have a soft landing in the Big Ten right now. Right. Now, obviously, Florida State, uh, I guess this is their Board of Trustees Chair, Peter Collins, saying earlier today, we've reached a crossroads in our relationship with the Atlantic Coast Conference. I believe this board has been left with no choice but to challenge the legitimacy of the ACC grant of rights and its severe withdrawal penalties. Now, obviously, to break with the grant of rights at this point, it's estimated that it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of what five hundred million. Four to, I mean, they're showing here on uh, on three five hundred seventy two million is the number that that they put out there today. Obviously, they're they're trying to not leave with probably any penalties but i think more than more than anything they're trying to force a settlement when wouldn't, wouldn't you agree uh, it's, it's just like the pack two they're pushing yeah. these schools to a settlement everybody said the pack 12 and the leaving 10 they sued the pack two to get their money and the pack two stood strong uh washington state oregon state held their ground and they ended up settling like yesterday and that's a huge deal that's a win for those schools this is the same situation, uh, except it's in reverse. And that is that ESPN is going to want that settlement. And they're just want to, they're going to try to get, I would guess it's going to be between two and $400 million. But if you look at a long-term contract, a 10 year deal with the big 10 or the sec that pays itself back in two and a half years. So there's really no reason to let that stop you. Yeah, I would agree to some extent. I mean, but I mean, if you're trying to stay up with, you know, well, 
Yeah, as long as it's not five hundred million, you're not going to make five hundred million in a few years. So that's, I mean, I get what you're saying though, for sure. Now, obviously, uh, right now the ACC, and and correct me if I'm wrong, this is not a lawsuit against ESPN right now. They haven't no. they haven't named them in the suit. Is that correct? Okay, that's exactly right. So, so then you've got the ACC actually beat FSU to the punch, is what it says here on on three filing a lawsuit Thursday in North Carolina against the board of trustees, the board of trustees for Florida state. The suit alleges that FSU breached its contract uh, contractual obligations and seeks a court ruling that establishes the grant of rights as valid and enforceable. Uh, one of the, th let's see the statement that they were talking about all ACC members, including Florida state willingly and knowingly re-signed the current grant of rights in 2016 which is wholly enforceable and binding through 2036. Now, what we had talked about earlier was you were saying that that was not correct, that, that you felt like, or that was Florida State is trying to act like nobody was given the opportunity to sign this. Where does this come from where this 2027 stuff comes in? Because I'm, this is where it starts getting a little cloudy for me, Bono. And it does for everybody. So 2016, they added an addendum that, that extended the deal between ESPN, the schools, and the ACC to have media coverage all the way through 2036. That was the term of the deal. The problem is, is there was an in-between there that, that said it could be renegotiated, but it, it needed to be voted on. The extension, and there was an extension done in 2021 by then, now ACC Conference Commissioner Phillips, and he signed it without holding a vote. And so they're yeah. claiming that's injurious, that that hurt them, that hurt all the schools. They didn't get a chance because he by himself uh, with his signature uh, extended the deal, the media value through 2036, but it's really only through 2027. Wow. So, uh, and that's wild, right? So all this time that this, you know, when I've talked to, you know, I mean, we've talked to a lot of folks about this in the last year with everything that's going on. You guys have obviously on your channel have been at the forefront of this, but we've we've spoken to a lot of guys in this industry, in the media industry and stuff like that, that have talked about how this grant of rights was impregnable. Um, right. I think that I think that they got to a point that we all kind of felt like maybe that wasn't the case because nothing is, you know, when after what you saw with Oklahoma and Texas being able to leave and essentially not even have to pay their their hundred million to get out. Apparently it, it starts looking like none of this stuff is enforceable, right? Well, um, don't listen to me. Don't listen to you. The people that are watching your show right now, they need to understand that Bob Thompson this morning, right after everything was released, board of trustees was done. Bob Thompson had, and I don't have the tweet in front of me, but basically I'm going to, to summarize that here. he could not believe they, they, the ACC signed this. He he was dumbfounded that they would not have anything past 2027 in writing. It's all a gray area, and so that and he's the godfather of realignment. <laughs> the ex Fox president, uh, uh, you know, Correct. Fox Sports president. And if he's the one who's just stunned by how dumb this looks, then the rest of us just need to take take our cue from him. Well, right. And weren't we all, I mean, we were all under the impression that it was impregnable and it was going to 2036. I mean, I don't even think, and then you can't, they've got it locked away under, you know, right. out in North, in North Carolina somewhere that you have to actually go in. They're not allowed to, you said earlier, you can't take pictures. You can't really take notes. It's just right. whatever you can read and see, you know, what you got to remember. Right. And then you can go file suit, but they're not going to give you the opportunity to write down stuff or do anything like that. But somebody went in there and they must have looked at it and, and saw where the loophole was. And I was under the impression there wasn't one. It sounds like they didn't have any of their ducks in a row. No, they didn't. And by the way, that contract leaked this morning. Somebody it leaked it. And, and wow. the ACC has accused Florida State of leaking it. And Florida State categorically denied it. And said, you know where we found it? We found it on the internet. That was their quote. So it's been released. That's how we know these things about 2027. That's how we know these things about 2036. That's how we know how mismanaged this has been from the beginning. And honestly, I, I, the world is shocked uh, of how badly this has turned out for the ACC. And, and you have to look at what ESPN has told them to do. ESPN de devalued their own 
product in the ACC when they didn't bring in Florida State to represent one of their – the ACC network is ESPN, and they right. didn't support their push to get into the Final Four because they wanted Alabama in. And that was the moment when Florida State's – that's it. We'll take check, please, and we'll get out of here. Yeah, yeah, and I think that – I think that uh, – so, I mean, and look – you know whether or not you believe that Florida State belonged in the in the playoff or not. It seems to me like there was a clear, well, and I don't know that I think that there's a huge conspiracy with that. But I know if you're Florida State and you're already concerned, as is Clemson and North Carolina and some of these other yeah. schools, which I, I mean, that would be my next thing is that you got to expect these guys to jump in on this as well. But to literally, you know. When you know this is going on, I mean, you had to know that this was coming, right? I mean, they were they were ticked off about it there, and and you know, plenty of people said they had plenty of reason to be upset. You know, you have an undefeated football team not in the college football playoff. Do you think that it, is that why it's cut and dried to you that they're going to the Big Ten? There's not there's not going to be any negotiation for the SEC. It's possible. Like I said, it's still an ESPN property, but uh, uh, that they and they value it, but. Let's look at the regionality part of it. Florida State right. is a uh, second school in Florida. They already have Florida. Clemson is a second school in South Carolina. They already have right. South Carolina. So right. everywhere that that they are, except for in Mississippi, I think doesn't Mississippi, there's Ole Miss and Mississippi State, right? right. So right. those that's the only exception. Every other state, there's only one school representing that well, in the sec and so uh, do they do they think florida state's valuable yes do they think they're alabama valuable obviously not yeah and i think there's also there's some other stuff that there's uh, some old blood old bad blood that's between florida state with coach bowden and some of the, because he refused right, for an right. awful long time to go into the sec the one thing that i would say about that is where i'm tend to i tend to wonder is ESPN going to stay on the side here? Because here's if you're ESPN, you own the entire state of Florida when right. it comes to college football, college sports in general. Because and you don't want Fox to be in any of those markets if you're ESPN. That's true. so you can you can keep them out by because you own the ACC right now, which has Miami and Florida State, and then you can obviously. You know, you have Florida as well. So at this moment, Fox doesn't have a foothold whatsoever. And you can see where the Big Ten would want that because that means that they now have a, re a recruiting footprint in the speed state, which is very important. You know, when we start talking, I mean, I, I know I understand, I understand that so much of this is about money, but I think the fact that the CFP had something to do with this, it kind of had to have something to do with competitive balance and everything else too. But I know that ESPN has definitely not wanted them in that conference. I don't think that the SEC wants the Big Ten roaming around down there in the speed state either. Yeah, but ESPN's running out of money. Disney's going right. broke. Fox is flush with cash. The Big Ten network is already making money. So mm -hmm. if you're going from that standpoint, do they, does ESPN want, want them down there? Absolutely not. Can they do anything to stop them? And and my the tip of the hat for me is – CFP committee did not take Florida State. Florida State is is part of the ACC. ESPN sure. is partners and made the made the ACC network for them. If they're not going to give them props and get them and and enrich that property, keep it viable, right. I don't think they're going to fight for them. That's why the Big Ten now that now this is the question: Who goes with Florida State? I don't think it's Clemson. I don't think it's Miami. I think you look at North Carolina. You look at right. Virginia. And Notre Dame, As their travel and, partner, and or whatever it. is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, Notre Dame, Dame, Notre Dame has 18. already signed their their next their next television deal. They're not going to the Big Ten right now. That Jason, that's not exactly right either. They signed the NBC deal, but NBC is part of the Big Ten. That's that's true. Right. Hmm. So they could fold that into the Big Ten contract and bring them in just like any other school if they decide they want to put give up their independence. Where has Notre Dame been on this? I know it's been trying to keep the ACC together at this point, right? right? 
Well, they did. That's why they were the champions of bringing in Washington, or sorry, they, uh, Stanford, Cal, and SMU. But now we see that that's backfired on them. It, it, one of the final quotes, and I was going to leave you with this. The, the great tweets today from people that dug into this 38-page document. And I won't take credit for this, but basically uh, there's this one paragraph. Let me read this really quick. The ACC's hotly contested vote last September to add three new members instead of interesting, increasing the value of his exist, existing members, media rights will further dilute these value, values and diminish the ACC's already deemed inadequate strength of schedule rating. This will ha necessarily handicap ACC members vying for a position in future coll college football playoffs against peers. And then it says, perhaps the most telling metric of the lack of media cachet those new ACC members carry one has forfeited all media payments, SMU, otherwise due as a member of the ACC, and the other two for forfeited approximately 66% of that revenue for several years to bring them in. And what that did is it devalued. And it says, in some uh, in summation, the ACC has negotiated itself into a self-described existential crisis, rendering itself fiscally unstable and substantially undermined its members' capacity to compete at an elite level. In doing so, the ACC violated the contractual, fiduciary, and legal duties it owed its members. Wow. Wow, so essentially they're saying because you brought in these terrible programs that don't the even put in, they don't watch anything, they don't watch it, they don't travel, they don't, they don't even go to their own stadiums. Um, and then they brought and that, in, then they brought up Oregon State as an exemplar. Why didn't you take Oregon State? They say in their legal filing, it actually says Oregon State is the program you should have brought in if you wanted to increase absolutely. value. It's and even incredible. for that matter, so is Pullman, Washington. I mean, you know, you think about up there in the Palouse; th those guys love football up there. They That's love where sport. I grew up, bro. That's my home. So absolutely, Washington wow. State cut, fans are rabid. They watch TV. They're in the millions every. every yeah, they're not. Uh, Alabama, but they're not sure. as low as Stanford and Cal. Nobody is, and and the truth is, is that I mean, we've and not to get off on that, but we know why the Pac-12 fell apart, and it wasn't anything to do with no, no. academics. It had the fact to do with you didn't have asses in the seats anywhere. That's it. You know, that's it. So, Jason. wow, man, this is a this is a obviously something to keep our eyes on. You know, it appears that. Well, and let me let me just have you close with this. Is this conference imploding on itself coming soon? Uh, do you feel like this that you're going to have, you know, is the Big 12 getting ready to, to probably take in some of these schools? And, you know, what's going to happen here? Florida State's out. Anybody who thinks that they're, they have a chance to come back is blind. They are going to, they'll go independent before they stay in the ACC now. Correct. In the ACC. I agree. So at this right. point, now, what are these other schools going to do? And I'm going to say they're going to stick and they're going to stay around. Everybody's now talking to Notre Dame because if Notre Dame jumps, the ACC disintegrates and it, and it turns into uh, maybe a three plus one. AQ conference. You would have the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, and the and the SEC, and then down here somewhere, you'd have the ACC, wow. and it'd be a rump conference, and it would be treated basically like the AAC is right now. And it's that's that was unimaginable eighteen months ago. Well, yeah, because I mean, and you look at the fact that you know you've got programs in the ACC that are right up there. We just had National Signing Day, and right. Three ACC programs were well higher than anybody in the 12. So competitive wise, you would think that they could have continued to be that in, in that position. But the truth is at this moment, well, it's amazing to me that they thought they were going to get away with this folks. Well, stay uh, tuned with us here. <laughs> uh, you know, make sure that you get over and check out the big 12 mafia channel. Um, it, these guys here, Bomber and his crew, uh, you know, Immaculate and, and you know, Moen, Wild you these guys are on this stuff day after day. This has been their, you know, absolute specialty when it comes to realignment and, and kind of reading these crazy tea leaves, which are, they're definitely wild. They are... Uh, Tell us a little bit. Obviously, you you said you've got a, a special guest coming on to talk about this the next week. Make sure you get over there, subscribe, and hit that bell button there at the Big 12 Mafia Show on YouTube because 
Uh, you're going to want to hear this one. Go ahead. Who who you got coming? Next Wednesday night, we're going to have Bob Thompson, the godfather wow. of uh, college realignment. And he's going to answer all the questions that nobody else will ask him. And uh, he's a he's a partner for the show, valued resource, and we really appreciate him showing up. So, Jason, Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on my show. I apologize I have to leave early. But, no worries, um, no you, worries. I wanted to a, just jump in here and get a little information from you because, I, <laughs> as you know, that. I was away from the office today and and I'm watching it and just my head was spinning. So I was like, man, I got to get a hold of Bomber. I'm so, glad we did. We, let's do it again. Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely, man. We'll, we'll get together again on it as, as this you know unfolds. Make sure you're here or at the Big 12 Mafia. We're going to make sure that you are up to date on all everything that's going on in conference realignment. Thanks a lot, everybody. We will see you on the next one. Peace out.